Hello all, I am Sai and you are watching The Book Dragon. In today's video, I am bringing to you my review of Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. This is the third and final book in the Infernal Devices trilogy and before getting into the video itself, I just want to disclose something. Uh, this is definitely one of my most favorite reads of this year, okay? I love the finale of the Infernal Devices more than the finale of the Immortal Instruments and for all those people who have been asking me for quite a while where to start with the Shadowhunter Chronicles with City of Moons or some other book, I like legitimately recommend Clockwork Angel over City of Bones because the writing is excellent okay. City of Bones is a bit boring at many instances but I'm sure the Clockwork Angel and this whole series it's just awesome. Just go forward and uh, pick this series up, uh, up a bit and you might be able to guess and spoil yourself a little bit for those but I'm sure that uh, of those two of these two this is the best place to start. Let's start with the plot of Clockwork Princess. I'm not going to spoil uh, the first two books in the Infernal Devices as well as the first five books in the Immortal Instruments while uh, doing this review. While I get into spoilers, I'll be telling you uh, when I'll be. And the plot actually uh, deals with the climax of the entire trilogy, okay? We know Will's story from book two and we know uh, what certain things are capable of doing in this world, okay? And actually the name Infernal Devices uh, is actually made justice a lot in the third book rather than in the first two books. And it is like just put in front of your eyes. Why is this trilogy called the Infernal Devices rather than any other thing? Uh, the power of Tessa is also totally revealed and what are her capabilities? They are just shown to us in a proper way. There are certain characters which just go dramatic changes. Believe me, okay? And all the ships that we want to happen, happen by the end of this book. Uh, I'll not say that it's a happy, happy ending or a sad ending, but it's a very satisfying ending. Be, please believe me, okay? Uh, I'm sure that... You can ship anyone in this book and uh, you might be disappointed at times but I'm sure that you will be satisfied at the end uh, for one thing or another. It's just fully uh, fledged and it's just complete entertainment. So yeah, the plot was really really engaging throughout. Moving on to the characters. All the three main characters, Jim, Will and Tessa, they have really good roles to play throughout the book. Okay, believe me, not even one of the three main characters is not given that much of importance. All three of them are given a lot of importance and they just uh, make this st uh, story stand for itself. It's really, really awesome in that way. Uh, one is not less for uh, less against any other, if you ask me. Uh, it was just satisfying. That's the only word that I can use to describe this book and everything in this book. Also, apart from the three main characters, uh, we get a lot more of Magnus in this one, okay? There was very little Magnus in Clockwork Angel, a little more of Magnus in Cl Clockwork Prince and even more of Magnus in uh, Clockwork Princess, which I just loved and adored, okay? I cannot get uh, enough of Magnus content in any book. So, if you're a fan of Magnus just like me, I'm sure that you're going to uh, enjoy this because he has a lot of role to play in it. Uh, without Magnus, certain things would not have happened throughout the, uh, towards the climax and certain moral supports for the characters, main characters would not have been given if not for Magnus. Also, apart from all these people, uh, my most favorite family, okay, the Lightwoods, okay, they are not perfect people. I understand that, but I just love them, okay, the Lightwoods are awesome and they also have really good roles to play within the story, okay. The light, okay, you understand uh, how the Lightwoods get the traits here from reading this one it's just awesome in that way and yeah i just like all the characters which are like the most compelling things for me to read in this entire series going on to the world building uh i can say that the magic was explored more than any other thing when it comes to the world building because we get a lot uh, more portion of the clave dealing with the clave in the second book itself but in this one uh the power of tessa and the other magics types of magics that are working in the shadow world are explained in a greater sense and a broader with a broader scope if you ask me uh how Tessa makes use of her power and certain abilities of the Silent Brothers uh, and certain uh, how to say powers when it comes to politics in the shadow world. All those things are explained very well. And also, despite all these things, one thing which uh, Cassie introduced in this book was like very legitimate and was very necessary for a book uh, set in the 1800s, if you ask me. And I like the way in which she pulled it off. It is misogyny. Okay, how misogynistic uh, some people were during the 1800s. Even uh, there are certain people right now. We cannot ignore that fact. Uh, but uh, a person being neglected a position just because of his or her gender is something which is totally irrelevant and it sh uh, she just showed it in a really good sense if you ask me okay I think only women can um, experience that and uh, portray to, uh, it to us in a proper way uh, men can't experience misogyny and uh, okay, we can try to understand but we cannot uh, experience it right so I think Cassie just depicted and uh, presented uh, uh, to us and represented if, uh, if you ask me and the world building as a whole was really really good uh, I could just see the scope of the shadow world extended 
uh, out of just London or New York in this book in a very really, uh, awesome way if you ask me. Finally talking about the pacing for a finale I think this book was excellently paced guys okay it was totally fast paced from the first page to the last okay things were happening unexpectedly continuously and they just uh, kept the pace of the book really really constant and really really fast so if you're a person who likes fast paced books do try the trilogy out because it's just awesome especially the climax I just devoured it completely okay it was really really fun rather than anything it was so fun and so satisfying and i just enjoyed the entire experience and obviously i rated this one five stars i could uh, i would uh, rate it more than five stars if it's possible but the rating system just allows five stars and it was just awesome guys so if you're having second thoughts don't even think just go forward and read the trilogy because it's just so awesome and then come and uh, uh look into all my discussion videos because i have a lot of thoughts on all the three books and now i'm going to step into spoilers so if you're interested in listening to the spoilers you can continue so if you're a person who wants to read the book without having spoilers which i think you should uh you can leave the video right now and let's just get into the spoilers first let's talk something about the worm situation when benedict like uh, just transforms into a worm and gabriel uh, comes to the institute asking for help uh, uh after they get to the lightwood's uh, house i saw my most favorite ship starting to happen okay i didn't expect it at all but it was just so so happy for me okay uh it's the ship of gabriel and cecily okay i see where cecily uh, sorry uh izzy and alec get their looks and characters from um alec actually gets his appearance black hair and blue eyes from will through cecily in the lightwood family and cecily and uh cecily and isabel are actually totally i can say mirror images okay there's nothing so different about them they are so so similar they are so independent they are so so they are really good okay i just uh loved how she tied cecily with isabel and the heredity it was really really awesome also uh magnus ending up with alec uh because magnus was attracted to will it was really really obvious in the second and third books and finally he got to be with someone whom he likes to be with in the mortal instruments it was really good in that way okay uh <laughs> I know how things end up in City of uh, Lost Souls and then jumping into this book. It just made a lot of sense for me. It, it was just as awesome. And I saw the ship for uh, Gabriel and Cecily starting when uh, Cecily jumps onto the worm's back and she makes the worm bite itself. And after that, uh, he is the one. That is, Gabriel is the one who puts an arrow through Benedict's eye and uh, kills the worm and saves Cecily. Uh, there are certain things which uh, like uh, Gabriel thinks that he's not supposed to think of seeing a woman and it was just so, how to say, I, I could just see the ship building there and it was just so awesome. I was just waiting for it to sail. Uh, just, uh, let's just talk about the consul, Josiah Wayland, okay? He was just com a complete ass, okay? I didn't like him at all. And all those letters which we get at the end of each and every chapters in the beginning, I, I didn't care at all, okay? Who cares what happens with the politics? I'm getting about the ships here and how my lovely people are going to survive or not it was just that much important for me those politics moments they were like so so driving me mad i don't care what happens in the damn play just show me what's happening within the actual plot of the book and Jos josiah Wayland, he was just a, he was a complete ass okay I, i'm not even able to speak clearly i'm that angry with him and uh, the moment he's killed by that automaton when it comes and beheads him i was like yeah fun okay I could uh, see that there are other people who are going to be injured but I felt so so happy when he died okay it might feel uh, sound sadistic but I did feel happy okay because he was such a horrible person horrible horrible character okay and it was just so fun to see certain things happen and I just enjoyed it a lot completely also after all these things happened uh, Jasmine is to re return back to the institute from the silent city and when she returns the automatons come there also and they abduct Tessa from there uh, one thing which I didn't expect uh, or see coming was Jasmine dying there, okay? When she died, she dies in the hands of Will and she actually has been saying the truth even from the beginning that uh, Mortmain is in Idris and it's just Kadar Idris. She's not said the whole name but she has given the place where Mortmain is, okay? It was really, really good, okay? Uh, Jasmine was one of my most favorite characters in the first book. I didn't like completely hate her also in the second book. Uh, I could understand wh why she was doing the things that she was doing. But in this one, I felt sorry for her because I think uh, she's a character who deserved a redemption arc. She didn't deserve to die the way she did. And also at last during Christmas when she comes as a ghost and talks with Will and says that uh, she's not able to get into the Institute right now, but in the years to come, uh, she will be able to make it through her. 
Also, I didn't understand why Will was given that uh, ability to see ghosts and talk to them. Uh, it was it didn't make sense at all. It just came in two scenes. One towards the climax, which was not even necessary. I think uh, it might have been to uh, show just I mean to us as readers. And the first time is in Clockwork Prince when he goes and uh, buys uh, something from the ghost in that crossbones graveyard. Okay, those are the only two two scenes during which. Um, uh, how to say Will's uh, abilities are actually expressed to see ghosts and it was really fun I actually did uh, miss Jasmine a lot because I think she did deserve a redemption arc also I like the way in which the ruby necklace from uh, <coughs> Camille was uh, shifted to the lightwoods in a proper way okay uh, actually it was not Camille's it was Magnus's Magnus gets it back from Camille after they break up and he gives uh, his ruby to Will who wears it okay and after that he gives the ruby to Cecily when he le uh, leaves out for searching Tessa and after that it is with Cecily who gets married to Gabriel okay so obviously it has gone into the how to say uh, it, has, it has become an heirloom of the Lightwoods and it's going to pass on and I'm very happy that uh, Isabel ended up getting it rather than any other stupid <laughs> Lightwood okay it was just so it just made so much sense I just loved it also apart from that uh, after Tessa is abducted uh, Magnus comes okay Magnus has been in a relationship with Wolsey I had doubts in the second book but in this book it was uh, made pretty clear very clear uh, they have just been having a physical relationship it's not romantic but they are in a relationship that was shown very clear after that uh, when uh, Tessa is addicted Jem becomes very ill and uh, Will doesn't want to leave Jem also he wants to go and uh, find Tessa because uh, he likes Tessa as well as uh, he loves Tessa as well as uh, he wants to save his prioritized fiance okay then what happens is uh, Magnus comes, talks with Will, and Will, uh, sorry, Jem gets to know that Will also loves Tessa. Then they have this parrotai talk, which was just awesome, guys. Okay, uh, I'm not able to judge whether they are good friends or not, but I do think that they are really good people, both Jem and Will. Okay, because they are ready to give up Tessa for the other. After all that happens, uh, uh, she, uh, Will just goes, and Jem has decided to go to the silencery, that which means that Jem is obviously going to die. Okay, uh, and also we get. We made uh, get it clear that uh, Jem has died while while uh, Will's parotid wound starts bleeding and it fades away. Okay, uh, it is really clearly made that Jem has died. Okay, and I was like very very annoyed at that time because he was my most favorite character of all the characters. Okay, uh, after Magnus probably Magnus is my all time favorite, but in the Infernal Devices specific to the Infernal Devices, Jem was my most favorite because uh, he seems so original for me. He didn't seem snarky in any way. He didn't see sassy. He seems so natural, so I liked Jem rather than any other character. Also, uh, I didn't like the way he died. Okay, <laughs> just in a single line, a line, uh, Jem had died. Okay, then we just jump onto the perspective of Tessa and we see where uh, Tessa is being kept in by Mortmain and the things that he says. Okay, he is just an evil dog. <laughs> I don't want to say any other words. You can uh, replace dog for any bad word that you want. Okay, he's such a horrible person, Mortmain. And after all this happens. Will goes and uh, Henry and Magnus they try and uh, develop the portal okay it's just the most awesome scene if you ask me uh, after Charlotte I think uh, Magnus is the only one only person who saw the full abilities of Henry and had uh, faith and belief in him and that's how Magnus helps Henry and they develop the portal okay it was just so awesome also the Lightwoods Gabriel and Gideon uh, I liked the cute relationship between Gideon and Sophie I wanted them to get back together okay uh, it was like a total uh, Will it happen or will it happen? Will it or will it not? It was such a condition throughout. But towards the end, I know that the ships will happen because it's Cassie series, okay? It's all about ships and it's just going to be angsty and awesome. It was angsty and awesome, I said. And uh, it was just good. Also, the way in which uh, Gabriel and Gideon conspire against Josiah and he figures it out ultimately. But Gabriel uh, tries to double cross him and he just confesses to Charlotte and supports her completely. It was so, so awesome. Also, when uh, Gabriel confesses and uh, certain people try to how to say um convict him continuously on that cecily comes to his side which i didn't expect okay i know that uh, this seems like a ship but uh, there are certain instances like that one which just uh, made the ship very legitimate for me then finally what happens uh, i just love the instance in which brother zachariah was uh, brought into the series okay and they are all going to uh, try and find uh, tessa and will will is on his way he finds tessa first the night before and Will and Tessa happen, okay? Uh, that's one of the favorite ships for many people, but it's not for me, okay? I didn't like that happening during that time, especially because both of them know that Jem died. 
it was not the right time okay uh i know i can understand why they went forward to it because they are going to die the next day that's what that's what they were thinking and i can understand them but i was not okay with them uh i also liked uh, at the end of that chapter guys i i just it just blew off my mind uh the way in which the clockwork uh angel actually gets uh stuck with gems sorry will's shoulder and he gets that star mark uh that's the mark of the herondales because they have uh, some connection with the angels it's passed on okay we see the star mark on jay's and that's how uh the inquisitor uh Imogen Herndale, she gets to know that Chase is a Herndale. It was just so awesome. Okay, I just loved the entire thing. Okay, I just loved the entire thing. Uh, how she's tied these both series together. We are the Lightwoods. We are the Herndales. We also get some Morgan Stuns in the Council. Okay, we get the Valens. Uh, we get Penhallows. We get almost everyone. Blackthorns. Okay, almost every family that that's uh, shown there is at least addressed in this one. The fair chattels, the Bramwells, I just loved everything. The connections, that were the best things that she has done between these two series, if you ask me. Finally, mm, that awkward moment when uh, Magnus uh, finds Will and Tessa in the condition in the morning and he asks them to get dressed up. Well, this is awkward. <laughs> it was like that. And uh, they come out. Okay, They are going to try and uh, help the others. And Will uh, hears Cecily's, Cecily's voice. He goes there, <clears throat> but there are already automatons that are fighting, and one autom automaton just takes away Tessa. Then come the Silent Brothers along with them to fight. Of these Silent Brothers, Brother Zacharias is one who's fighting. What happens suddenly? Brother Zacharias who just falls down, and ta-da, the big reveal. Zachariah is Jim. Okay, I was just so, so, so happy because I didn't want Jim to die because he's my most favorite. I liked the way in which he was made immortal, okay? Obviously, Jim and Tessa is going to be a thing now because both of them are immortal. I know that even if Will and Tessa happen at last, uh, Jim and Tessa are the only ones who are going to live for the longest time. And I know Silent Brothers cannot, cannot marry, but there was something that's happening because you cannot make more, both of them immortal and not make them get back together. I was just uh, so hopeful in that and I just enjoyed it throughout. It was just so awesome. If Jim's best moment was Brother Zachariah, Tessa's best moment was uh, when she got to know that Ithuriel was the angel that was trapped inside her angel and she makes contact with Ithuriel and she transforms herself into Ithuriel. She just squishes Mortmain, okay? She literally squishes Mortmain uh, in the hand of the angel and he just turns into some kind of goo, okay? And all the automatons also stop working. That's it. The story is done. We have 100 pages more of the book to go through, but the villain's dead, the antagonist's dead. There's no more bad people in the story, okay? Even Josiah Valen has died. No bad people, only good people. And for 100 pages, we have pure ship parody and friendship moments, which I just loved, okay? And also sibling moments, which I more than loved because every kind of sibling ship that was shown in this one was awesome. It was so, so enjoyable, so, so relatable. I just ate them up like anything because it was so, so awesome, okay? I just loved it throughout. Uh, <clears throat> especially, uh, I was so I was feeling so bad for Ethereal because Ethereal is not a careful angel, okay? Because he was dumb. That's why he got trapped by Mortmain in the Clockwork Angel. And after that, he didn't learn the lesson, okay? He got trapped by uh, Valentine and was kept in the Valen Manor, which was just so stupid, okay? I, I was like imagining, you're an angel, you're an angel. How can you get trapped twice? Uh, once so the, for the first time with this villain and for the second time with a be uh, even worse villain it just didn't make sense okay are angels that powerless in this world okay that's my question an angel made it to get stuck twice okay once within a sm uh, small thing which was ticking and once uh, in a cellar okay I was not able to understand that and I just did feel a lot bad for Ethereal in that sense and after that the heavenly fire just like it went into jace's system was also in tessa's system which i just loved a lot next i was uh, a bit <clears throat> how to say i had like a bit of confusion that this might happen towards the end because in city of bones we get to know that uh valentine is clary's father that is the protagonist of the story and the antagonist of the story are father and daughter <laughs> i was fearing the same to happen in this one that mortmain was going to be Tessa's father, which would be just so, so horrible. I didn't want that to happen, okay? Uh, <clears throat> but I like the interesting concept in which uh, Tessa was born, okay? Her mother was a shadow hunter who didn't know that she was a shadow hunter. She was not ruined. So she was impregnated by a demon and 
Tessa became half shadow hunter, half demon, hence she's a warlock technically, but she's not like any other warlock because um, she's not a shadow hunter, she's not a warlock. She's something in between. She's the only thing that's ever present like that. It was so so awesome. Also, I didn't even think that uh, Tessa would be a Stark Wither, okay? Tessa is a Stark Wither and we know <clears throat> Hodge from the Mortal Instruments, okay? Hodge is such a coward, okay? Despite the good things and bad things that he does, one thing which just remains constant for me throughout the series is that Hodge is a coward. But Tessa and Hodge are totally different people, dude, because uh, Cassie does show how the family traits just follow. The Lightwoods are proud people. We can see that pride. I can see the pride in Isabel, okay, for sure. And also many of, uh, how to say, um, Cecily as well as Gabriel's character reflected as such within uh, Isabel. Also, some of the characteristics of uh, both Cecily and Gabriel reflected in uh, Alec as well. He was a shy person, yet I could see certain character traits that were uh, just linking both of, uh, how to say, the predecessors and successors together. But with Tessa, I was not able to relate Tessa with uh, Hodge in any way because they are so totally different people. Uh, the alma mater of those two people are so so different. I just loved it. Okay, uh, the Stark Brothers are, are kind of a they are not a famous family. Okay, also it was so so poetic to see that she's a warlock. Okay, Tessa's <clears throat> technically a warlock, and Aloysius Stark Brother was keeping the spoiler spoils of warlocks that he was keeping different body parts of warlocks, which was so so horrible to read in the second book. And in this book, I thought that this guy has to experience something bad. But I didn't think that he would be experiencing something so bad that his granddaughter was actually overlooked and not a shadow hunter. It was so so awesome. Into the finale, the last two to three chapters and the epilogue just made me cry, guys. Okay, I was like, uh, water came to my eyes, tears came to my eyes constantly throughout reading all those two to three chapters and the epilogue. The first uh, instant during which uh, I was crying a bit was uh, Sophie's ascension. Okay, when Sophie drinks from the mortal cup and becomes a shadow hunter and she and Gideon are finally getting back together also after that when uh, Will, Tessa, Cecily and uh, Gabriel go to the uh, house of the Herondales and they go and uh, meet their parents okay Will and Cecily meet their parents and <laughs> Tessa is saying like they are just your parents they are not ducks don't be terrified it was such a fun uh, thing to read if you don't know why uh, Will is afraid of ducks please do, uh, do and uh, do go and read that snippet of a show, uh, story in Cassie's website because it is there. It was so fun to read, okay? I was reading it for the first time and I just laughed out loud. I was able to make all those connections with this one. Although there's a reference of ducks in City of uh, Lost Souls with Jace, which was also hilarious if you ask me. I just loved the entire time. So it was just so, so beautiful, guys. Also, in the epilogue, okay? Uh, we know that Gem and Tessa have been married. Uh, Gabriel and Cecily have been married as well as Sophie and Gideon have been married. So all the ships happened at last. Uh, Magnus has gone from London. I think he goes to New York directly or to Paris. Not sure though. Uh, and Tessa and Will just live their lives together. Finally, when uh, Will, Will gives uh, Tessa a pearl bracelet for their uh, 30th anniversary and uh, Tessa ends up wearing it even after he dies for a few amount of years. And uh, Gem and Tessa meeting every year for one day for one hour at Blackfriars Bridge. It was just so, so, so much, guys. Okay, I was not able to control the tears at all during those instances. Finally, we get uh, Will's death being described. Jim coming as Brother Zachariah and he playing the violin, okay, while listening to which Will dies uh, with Brother Zachariah. That is Jim on his side and Tessa lying on his shoulder. It was so, so, so beautiful. I just uh, ate it up. It was so, so. It was so, so beautiful, guys. I cannot uh, describe it with enough words. Finally, this is not the climax, okay? All of these are satisfying in many ways, but the real satisfaction hit me hard only in the last two pages of the book, which I was not at all expecting, okay? I know that from reading the Immortal Instruments that Brother Zachariah gets transformed in some way and he isn't a silent brother anymore. I didn't think that uh, after 2007, it comes to 2008 and Jim and Tessa meet again and get back together, okay? It, it has finally happened. I just didn't uh, think that happened. But there's one thing which just bugs me a bit because Jim is mortal again, okay? He's not going to live forever, but Tessa is. So Jim will also die. She is going to see the two loves which she had equally for two different people in her life die while she survives, okay? And also I like the way in which Magnus supports Tessa th throughout, okay? 
from the time she gets to know that she's a down worlder to the time when uh, she loses will uh, Tessa doesn't go or uh, stay with anyone else she goes and uh, stays with Magnus who just Magnus is kind of like a guardian for Tessa if you ask me and I just love it because no other person would have uh, done it in the perfect way like Magnus did while they are in Paris and when they move from Paris to New York and uh, Magnus showing the new New York to uh, Tessa it was so so beautiful. I also liked the way in which Cassie actually addressed the world wars and associated them with the infant devices story during which there are two characters who are speaking and saying uh, okay two Shadowhunter characters who are speaking and saying that uh, we can save the mundanes that is the human beings from demons but we cannot save them from themselves because uh, in the world wars there are no demons okay there are only people who are fighting against each other the shadow hunters are there to protect the human beings from demons they are not there to protect human beings from human beings themselves it's their responsibility to stay safe with themselves that was so clearly portrayed and i just loved every bit of it and yeah these are all my thoughts on Clockwork Princess and I just devoured the entire trilogy. I'm, I'm not sure if I'll be reading the Dark Artifices or the uh, Last Hours next. I think I'll uh, most probably read the Last Hours because Chain of Iron is going to come out in like just a couple more months or three more months. Uh, so I'm waiting for that. For reading that I'll have to read three more books which are uh, The Bane Chronicles, Tales from the Shadowhunt Academy and uh, Chain of Cool which I think I will be able to because uh, two of the three books are already on my TBR and it will not take a lot of time for me to buy that single book and read it and then pre-order Chain of Iron. I think I'm going to do that. I'm not sure though. Uh, I'll let you guys know uh, what I'm going to read next after reading uh, Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy. And that's it for today. If you did enjoy watching today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also share it to your friends. If you want to get more content from me, do subscribe to the channel because I publish new videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.